Hello and welcome back. My hair looks so greasy. Why is that? Okay. Oh no, my coffee. Come on, hair. Come on, hair. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna put my glasses on for this because it's serious. These glasses are so dirty. Hi, hello, welcome to those of you that are just joining us and to those of you that are new. You can still run from here. Escape now, while doom is not yet just around the corner, but maybe sort of it already is. Actually, stay. It's too late for you. I've already said hi. Welcome back to another episode of Noah Reviews Things in a rather extensive and probably a little too much type of way. So today we're going to dive straight into episode 3 of Squid Game. Only if the city allows, of course. And for those that are new, um, you probably are already aware of this just by clicking on the video. The video length is, you know, she's a lot. She is ample. What you're going to be seeing right now is a first time reaction to something, but it's not necessarily a reaction video. I think for this series, I do try to steer away from that when I can, because more so what I'm trying to do with these videos is give you my first time impressions. Like viewing the show for the first time, how I'm feeling, what my thought process is, getting into analysis reviews, while at the same time maybe proposing some theories here and there. Yes, I have not seen the entire show just yet. I am at episode three, which is what we're gonna be watching later. I would appreciate it if people are nice enough to not add spoilers in the comment section, which so far they have been, or if they do add spoilers, they apply a warning first. That's been very helpful. So thank you. Thank you so much for being considerate. All of that said, I'm really excited. The only thing that I'm really sad about when it comes to making these videos, as, as much as I love it, right, is the fact that I have to pace myself. Sure, it's good to ration the show because there aren't a lot of episodes to work with, but I feel like I'm rationing it too much because throughout the week, I can't watch the show, nor can I film any sort of videos because I have stuff that got, that's happening. <laughs> scientific terms I have stuff happening so I can only really find time to do this stuff over the weekend and then edit so it just kind of sucks that I can't binge it like everyone else and also I have to be extra careful because people everywhere are posting about this show and I could very easily be spoiled for it um, but so far I haven't I've been doing a pretty good job so I would ask for your assistance in making sure that that continues for my experience for the entirety of the show. Mr. Detective! Bruh, the fucking balls on this dude to be, like, for Mr. Detective Sexy Beautiful to be following, to be tailing them this way, I guess that's why he's a cop. Wujin Port, welcome. Whoa, so many people are coming back. What? That wasn't translated. The fuck? Hold on. I'm sorry, I'm a measly English speaker and I wish that I could fully understand and speak Korean because I feel like there's so much that we miss, you know, when translations happen. I would know this because when I watch Filipino shows or movies, films, here on Netflix, whenever I hear the actual dialogue versus the translation, so much is lost. Like the way that they water it down. And this is not me trying to drag the translators. They're just doing their best. They're doing their job. I get it. Like I, I, if you are frustrated by shows the same way where because there's so much good wordplay that's happening in the dialogue or there's something like deeper, there's a context there that's, that can only be um, explained culturally, things like that. I understand it. I experienced that too in my own language and in my own whenever I consume local films or movies. It's uh, and shows. I feel the same way. There is that frustration. I'm sure we all share that. Or maybe like we share that as people that speak more than one language. This is kind of crazy to me, this opening scene, which I remember from the last episode was 200 plus, 200 plus people. If all of them came back, which I don't know, it might not be safe to assume that all of them are coming back, but if they are, they, here they are. <laughs> here come the participants. I think that Mr. Detective right now is playing such a dangerous game and it's being revealed that they are being shipped off. The participants are being shipped off to Musgrave, the island. I call the island Musgrave. It's a Genshin Impact reference. You can look, look it up. <laughs> this guy is so fucking ballsy for doing this. It's so sloppy, dude. How this whole thing is panning out. And what I mean by that is like, shouldn't there be more security here somehow? Why is it that 
Mr. Sexy Detective Guy was so easily able to just walk right in. And he's just chilling here. He's texting a buddy. He's like, oh my god, I'm doing it. <laughs> For an operation this extensive and also illegal, you would think that there would be more security applied to especially this process of shipping over participants because that's when they get in contact with the the real world. I just finished watching Midnight Mass, so I'm going to call it the mainland. But then again, there's really not much to expect from a man that thinks that high-level security approval should be done by using a mask. You know, what what is there to be expected from that? <laughs> I wanted to focus on the mask here. We have circles. That makes sense. Like, does he not look- the Oh my god! So you're telling me you're not even looking at the side mirror right now, my dude? Like, look at this. He sees nothing. He sees nothing. What is underneath that mask, good sir? It's not eyes, I'll tell you that for sure. What kind of horse blinders? Halut, I'm back. What was I saying? <laughs> the man with the umbrella. Usan? <laughs> the only reason why I know Usan is because I, I stand ATs so fucking hard. And there are two members in there, <laughs> for those of you that don't know ATs, there are two members in there called Wuyong and San. And together, their ship name is Usan. And I found out that that means umbrella. You didn't know that knowledge before this video, but now you do. You're welcome. What is the plan, dude? That's such a bad idea! In the scene where the policeman, he has killed one of the Jabberwockies because, you know, everything went according to plan. He's such a planner. And so he dumps the Jabberwockies' body. He ma- first of all, he manages in that tiny cramped space in the car while people were there and the door was open to kill a man, take his clothes, take off his own clothes, exchange the clothes, like put the clothes on and stuff like that. Like I can't even fucking do that in a dressing room. The talent in this. That's how I know that he's going to live through the entire thing. <laughs> the corpse of the former Jabberwocky is the one that he stole the uniform from. He threw it overboard along with his badge, along with his ID. Strange. If that thing washes up in the ocean, I wonder if that's going to cause some sort of stir because people are going to think that Junho, beautiful Mr. Sexy Detective Sir, is the one that died, like that was his corpse. They actually do kind of look alike. They have the same body type too. Ow. I don't know if you've ever tried to pour scalding hot liquid, scalding hot broth from a bag into a container before, but it is frightening. <laughs> this should be one of the games. Yongam Yonggam nim? They just call him Yonggam, huh? We don't know his name. Mr. 001, we just call him Yonggam, which means old man. 187. Here's a question. I asked my best friend this too. Now that we're back in the arena, that's what's happening in this scene. We see that the returning players are down to 187. My question now. So the game states that if the participants currently were to quit and go home, they would go home empty-handed, and then the two 25.5 billion because it's a hundred million per life lost, um, would be distributed to, bere to the bereaved families of the participants, the ones who died. Now that they're, they have a different total number, it is now 187 and not 456, does that mean that the prize money is smaller because the previous 200... Oh, the previous 25... <laughs> the previous 25.5 was already distributed to the family members. So it's no longer 45.6 billion in total for prize money. Or does this count as a continuation? I'm curious about that. I wonder how that works. Oh, Song. Oh, Song. Where are your glasses? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. I'm fucking soft now. Hold on. Oh, look at his... Oh, I paused at such a beautiful moment. Look at his smile. Oh, Ali. 199. Angel. Baby, I hope you make it. I swear to God. You can take Yongam Nim. <laughs> I hope he gets the money and he can get to see his kid and his wife again. The mere thought. 
they have no fucking idea too. They have no idea where Ali is. He just left. He gave them money and he was like, go run. We'll see each other again, maybe. Bruh. Anyway, it's adorable what's happening here. I don't trust Sangwoo a little bit. I know that in the last episode, things were happening. But there's something about Sangwoo. I can't... I don't know. Maybe because he's withholding information. I'm a, I'm a little afraid. Although, there is also something to be feared about a man that isn't afraid to die. I gotta say. Damn. On your body. There, the moments nice like that, right? Sorry. <laughs> oh, hold on, two one two. Oh my God, two one two, Azalea Banks. Oh, is it two one four? No, it's two one two. There it is, two one two. It's two one two, right? Wait, I'm distracted. What? So many things went into my mind just now, and there's still things that I want to say. Two one two. This is such a good song. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> What? Brick, brick one second, I'm dumb. I need to understand what that is. What is a brick hat? A brick hat stove? Kids do that? Wait, am I stupid? Briquette. Okay, it's briquette. Compressed block of coal dust or other combustile biomass material, charcoal, sawdust, wood chips, peat, or paper. Used for fuel and kindling to start a fire, the term derives from the French word brick, meaning brick. Thank you. I feel like this is gonna bite me in the ass and hurt me in the end. Can't wait! Why am I so talented at pausing Ali in his best moments? Look at this, I went to pause again. I love this beautiful spot! Am I the talented one or is Ali just like adorable every fucking time? I wanna say both, but it's probably- it's probably the latter, honestly. Hold on, I'm just gonna- let me just have some ramen, then I'll t tell you why I paused this. When we first saw this section, it was the participants in blue that were walking around here. But now we see the Jabberwockies doing the same thing. The circle Jabberwockies. All of them have circles. I just think that parallel is incredible. I proposed a theory in my last video, watch episode 2 review up here or down there, it'll be linked somewhere, that the Jabberwockies themselves are also players because they are playing the defense side in the squid game. So they are also participants, they are also players. Whereas the participants that we're watching, Gihun, Yonggamnim, these people, they are playing offense. The participants outside are working at a disadvantage, aka they're walking on one leg. Now, I am wondering, because the participants had walked here the same way, it's kind of the show's wink wink nudge nudge to make it seem like, see they're equal. They're all playing this game. But they get rooms, huh? Well, I guess because they're on the side of the squid head, so they shouldn't have a disadvantage. Sorry? Are you guys friends? Holy shit. I just thought of this. Here's, here's the theory that I'm trying to say. What if every single fucking time the offense successfully wins, then they are added to the staff? If not actual players, what if these are former players? Former offense team members. Because how did the frontman accumulate this many people already? He put out an ad? We didn't see it. <laughs> Where is it? Craigslist? Searching for sadistic person that likes routines, kidnapping, and masks with circles on them. Contact this number for more information. Whoa! She used her prison pocket. Wow, without even a... Okay, do you want to? Let's go! Alliances! The way I cheer for 67, the way that I would run her religion for her. This is not normal. You have signal? Whoa. So what I'm trying to understand is Mr. Detective Sexy Beautiful's motivations for doing this, for risking his life, essentially. I guess there's also wanting to find out what happened to this family member or friend or whomever he he's been trying to locate from episode two when the cards okay actually bef let me go to episode two and show you when the cards were given to the normal participants the ones with gihun his side they the cards the business cards they weren't wrapped in 
a box or anything like that. When he found the card, it was in a box. Episode 2 where... Oh, there he is. Okay. 그래도 연락 안 되면 제가 내일 직접 실종 신고할게요. 이제 형은 형 가끔 그러잖아요. 연락도 잘안 받고. Yeah, he said Hyung. That's so confusing in the subtitles. I think he's saying Hyung, but I'm not sure, so I need to read it in Korean just to make sure that I'm not making that up in my mind. Yeah, he said Hyung. This is it. This is what I'm reading. Okay, I know that he's saying Hyung, so it's someone older. So I um I'm assuming that it's someone fairly young ish not yungam nim's age range i'm not sure if it's a blood relative because if they're like actual related brothers because the thing about hyung and oma and all of that is that you can call people that like i can call my friend's mom mom also it wouldn't be that weird here so i cannot make the pure assumption here that they are brothers but i can make the assumption that the person that he is talking about is within a specific kind of age range. He's not Yungam Nim. Apparently not. Okay, so now with that in mind, I'm gonna look at this scene again. Whoa. Why does that look familiar? Oh, here. Here's the box. Theory of desire. So that's why what I'm gathering from that scene is that the person he is looking for is not is not a participant. It's someone within the Squid Game, uh, Squid Game field. It's someone there. Either a Jabawaki or well, who knows, maybe it's the front man. He's been prepping. The, twice this picture. Theory of desire. Why would you specify that? The psychoanalytic theory of Jackus. I don't know how to say his name. A, a psychiatric person. I was talking about so much about the emotional manipulation that goes into forming an organization like this, an event like this, testing people this way. And here we have it. I want his thing on desire. Here it is. Desire. Desire refers always to the unconscious desire because it is unconscious desire that forms the central concern of psychoanalysis. It is only once it is formulated, named in the presence of the other, that desire appears in the full sense of the term and again in the ego in Freud's theory and in the technique of psychoanalysis. What is important is to teach the subject to name, to articulate, to bring desire into existence. He distinguishes desire from need and from demand. Even after the need articulated in demand is satisfied, the demand for love remains unsatisfied since the other cannot provide the unconditional love that the subject seeks. Desire is neither the appetite for satisfaction nor the demand for love, but the difference that results from the subtraction of the first from the second. The guy that he's after is whoever is running the operation. I am certain of it. Because Netflix fucking messed that the fuck up. <laughs> and I think now I understand a little bit what the motivations are for why this started in the first place. I think that the person that's running this, and if we are to assume that it is the front man, I think what the front man wants is for these people to recognize within themselves the desire for something that... And that once they acquire it, they still are not satisfied. If I'm going off purely off of the theory of desire, which is what this person subscribes to because he's fucking insane. He wants to prove that people will never be satisfied, that they will always want more. This is also why choosing the participants, the people on Gihun site, the players, their circumstances are all different. I had it wrong, I think, at the beginning. I thought that there would be a common denominator between these people and maybe the intent of the front man or the people running must grief is to punish them for being thieves, for operating outside of the law, whatever. But now I think that it's an honest experiment because truly, if he were just a madman to be a madman, he wouldn't honor the clauses. He wouldn't honor the things that he promised these people. He wouldn't honor these random fucking rules set by these games. But he does. When he said that he would let them go if they reached the majority to no longer participate, he let them go. This is him being an armchair expert at psychoanalysis, thinking that Jackis Lacken, or however you say his name, I'm so sorry, is a fucking genius, and that his studies do prove to be true of the human condition. 
And that's what he's trying to prove here. Who he submits these things to, whether it's to some other organization or whether it's just for his own fucking, I don't know, satisfaction, I don't know. That's where I'm at. And I'm confidently going to put that out there, even though I might be wrong, just because, like, I went off and... I feel like there's no going back now. Anyway, I'm going to go back to episode three. I guess it is also possible that maybe it's one of the people there that believe in the front man's philosophy. I guess that's also a possibility. Oh, no. That's for a game. That's for a game. Who are you? What kind of love story? Were you coughing last night? 28. Because see, they're also numbered. If you think about it. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you never met your dad, huh? Dakji chicken bugum up got in on the chicken game del Tandega or Rusty Hadon Norio. Dega Monjaro Nesu. Okay. Alright. Oh, those are the shapes and yeah. No. No. No, oh no. He has an advantage, this guy. He got something in the bread. Have you ever heard the title of my biography? Something in the bread. Wait, no, that's... Wait, 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 wait. I don't know what those candies are called, but they are... They're street food candies. The participants are told to stand in front of a door. Each door has a symbol on it. An umbrella, a star, a circle, etc. These symbols are usually what you find in that street food candy which I do not know the name of, but it's brown, it's made of sugar and like baking soda or baking powder. Like from what I understand, right, that piece of candy or whatever, the goal of it is to eat around it until you preserve the shape in the middle. And if it breaks, you lose the game. Does that have anything to do with this? I don't know. But Sangu is being extra fucking sussy today. Extra sus. He said that they should each like stand in front of a door. Even though there are most definitely risks to standing in front of the wrong fucking door. This guy, this is why I'm saying I don't fucking trust him. Because sometimes it's like, when someone has nothing to goddamn lose, it's so difficult to fight them or trust them. <laughs> so now, you are gambling the lives of your friends. And say that each of you should stand in different doors to gather the answer. The risk here is that if one of your friends, if one of your alliance members stands in front of the wrong door, you lose them. Is that what the alliance is about? So the question is submitted by Shanika Sidiel. If anybody would like to submit questions and stuff, maybe I'll feature you in my next video. Who knows? Let's have a discussion. As long as there are no spoilers. If you were in any of the players' life slash money situations and just like them, you had no idea what you were going into, would you have taken them up on their offer? Yeah. I'm sorry, was that too loud? Was that too quick? Yes, I would. If I were in Gihun's shoes, which I'm so thankful I'm not, privilege. But if I was, and like all of these things were falling down around me, I would do this. Especially I have a friend there, you know, and I have this... I have this uh, proclivity to be helpful towards others. I don't think there's any way that I'd be able to skip this without feeling like I'd missed out. Okay, I used that word correctly, thank God. Um, <laughs> Bruh, if the game, if the fucking game is being able to take away the pieces of the candy without breaking the shape, the umbrella's so tough, how are you gonna do that? So. Really? Switch. Switch. Anya. Fuck you! You had that chance, you vermin, to make a difference in this moment. Fuck you. Oh shit, I can't read that. I know the translation, but I want to know what it is in Korean. But I can't read handwritten, handwritten Korean. It's too difficult for me. Yeah, that's fucked. Also, I do not understand Sangwoo's whole thing here. They could have all just lined up in one place. Why didn't he give the advantage to all of them? Was he worried that there would be a limit to the number of people that could line up? Because no one said anything like that. Why didn't he just tell them all that they could line up for the triangle? Oh god, Yungam-nim! Oh my god, careful! Oh my god! <laughs> 
who is this? Who is th- that person? That is too close, sir. Whoever you are on the field. Me as the front man. Um, excuse me, paging. Yes, triangle number 21. That's way too close. You better back the fuck up, bro. Why are we focusing on this umbrella man so much? We really are. We really are. That is the umbrella. <gasps> That's not Gihun. <laughs> Because unfortunately, too, this thing is made out of sugar. This place doesn't look like it's that cold. It's probably not supposed to be. It's a playground. So your hands get sticky. As you continue to work with the with the candy. Fuck you. Fuck you. You fucking knew. You fucking knew what was going to happen. Fuck you. That's interesting, too, on the umbrella. Looks like rain. But yes. You can melt it with your sweat. Always gotta be the last fucking one. Every fucking time. <laughs> he would just be a man. Just some guy. <laughs> this is how you climb up the ranks? You just steal masks? Anyway, that was episode three. I went through a roller coaster of emotions. I think I want to see episode four also. I'm just going to pee and then I'm going to dive straight into it. But first, I'm going to end this video by saying what the fuck was that? Episode three, the man with the umbrella. Um, um, but I'm sure that even though with all the things that I tried to discuss today and cover, there are still things in there that I missed. Also, the guy, what's his number? 111? When he was told to go left? Huh? What the fuck? Industry plant? Also, yeah, I said this thing from earlier and I do think that that's the deal is like they are also playing and perhaps the players of the people that are defending the squid head were past participants that were on offense. What if the people that win from offense are absorbed into the company of the squid game? That's episode three. I'm going to go pee and then I'm going to watch episode four. I hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you once again. Uh, next week or whenever for episode four hope you enjoy this watch episode two episode one i have a playlist that i've created for both of those reviews they will be available below um shout out to the members that are new and also the old members thank you so much for supporting this channel for as long as you have for giving any sort of support at all it means the world to me i wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for you guys so please know that i'm always grateful i'm always thinking about you and I always love you more than a friend. 